Hello and welcome to this edition of Construction Business TV with a local contractor. I'm Joshua Vita and this, I'm with Mr. Trevor Talbert today. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Talbert. Uh, so my first question, you know, just uh, state your name and uh, your company real quick for us. I'm Trevor Talbert. I am the COO of TR Grayson Company. Awesome. Okay, uh, so um, when did the company begin and, uh, you know, uh, how long has it been around for? So um, TR Grace and Company um, is a multi, uh, it is the mother company to a few enterprises. We have TR Grace Construction Management and TR uh, Grace Global Logistics, as well as um, T uh, Grace Safety Company. So um, we began about 11 years ago. Um, actually, it was through the birth of uh, my father-in-law, Nathaniel Grace. Um, and it's actually coincidentally named after my wife, Tierra Grace. Um, so um, we've been around, um, like I said, for about 11 years now and have really started to take off on the commercial and civil uh, construction platforms within the last five years. Um, however, before that, it was more so about risk mitigation and risk management. Okay. And uh, so you're, you said you're the COO, is that correct? Yes, sir. That is correct. And uh, what, what, what responsibilities do you have with that position? So I am basically in charge of all of the field ops and um, new business development. Okay. And uh, you mentioned some of the services you offer. Can you just restate some of those so for our audience? So um, we definitely um, focus on general contracting. Um, we do commercial, civil, and a tad bit of industrial as well. Um, we do risk mitigation for larger farms. Um, to do uh, environmental compliance and different things like that to make sure that uh, we are abiding by all our federal, state, and local regulations um, to avoid any potential um, suits, as well as um, try to create platforms to where they can eliminate wasteful costs on, on, and um, help drop some of those things on those avenues. Okay, awesome. Uh, so this past year has been a little bit difficult for a lot of people uh, with the pandemic. Uh, was there any uh, challenges your company faced with the pandemic uh, of COVID-19 or anything like that? Definitely. Um, and and it, it, I can say it was kind of uh, beneficial to an aspect um, of where we had to, you know, close down the office, of course. Yeah. So what's been different is we definitely had to find new ways of meeting. Like uh, here we are with the Zoom call of Microsoft Teams, different things like that, uh, Google Meet. Um, just to make sure that we maintain accountability amongst our staffs, as well as um, try to uh, constantly keep up with our clients and make them feel that, you know, despite us not being able to meet, you know, in person, that we'll still be able to get the jobs done. And um, that supervision was still being, you know, provided wherever it was needed. Awesome. And uh, I know uh, during the beginning of this year, we had a uh, increase in prices, especially lumber and other uh, materials. Uh, was that something that affected you greatly or was you, or how did so, you solve so, that? so throughout the um, first two immediate quarters following, you know, the lockdowns and everything like that, we, we, we fared fairly well. Um, however, uh, it kind of came back to bite us as we approached the uh, new year um, where a lot of um, raw goods were, you know, being slowed down. And so, of course, this led to extend it. Um, lead times, which were, you know, 16, 20, even, you know, 32 weeks out um, for normal shelf life items. Um, also, we tried to do what we can to avoid passing added costs to our clients and ultimately their end users. However, um, I, I believe it was common that, you know, we had contract amounts that went up, you know, 20, 25, 30 percent, even sometimes more just because that, hey, we had no way of, you know, mitigating costs because of, you know, COVID-19. Um, as you see now, um, some materials are starting to fall, but there are some that are still, you know, higher mm -hmm. than um, what they were pre-COVID. So it's definitely been a, a time to make sure that your estimating and your takeoffs is well put together, because if you, if you aren't careful, you definitely will take some losses. Um, not only that, but you want to be uh, able to do your due diligence and provide the best product and satisfaction that you can for your uh, clients and end users. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so also we had the uh, freeze back in February. Did that did that increase your uh, business at all, or did you know did anything happen with that? Um, so it actually um, brought us back for a little while. We we kind of strayed away from residential. Uh, 
Sorry, because it begins to get messy sometimes, but I mean, everybody has a niche and um, we definitely uh, expanded business in the residential sector since the freeze. Um, we we, we uh, kind of created um, a call line for uh, handyman services, as well as we've been able to take on some uh, maintenance contracts with uh, a few um, out of town investment groups, um, namely people like Door West, Open Door, uh, you know, Bursey construction, things like that. We, we, we sought after um, because it, it just created a new stream of revenue for us. Not only that helped us to branch out into that, if in case we ever want to just go that route to say, hey, we want to be developers as well. Um, one of the things is also learned, though, is that um, one of the uh, plumbing to, uh, aspects that I, I've looked at is the effects of CB, CPVC versus PEX pipe. Um, and, and surprisingly, we find that CPVC pipe withstood a lot more damage than regular PVC or uh, PEX pipe. And so now that when people call to ask me questions or, you know, when I'm walking jobs and doing pre-construction meetings, I'm letting them know, hey, you know, um, if you're not using copper, um, you may want to really consider using uh, CB, CPVC instead of uh, PEX because you know, with all the uh, changes that we've seen in weather lately, we would definitely want to make sure that we do things to mitigate the risk on the front end instead of the back end. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, so in your industry, what do you think the most important quality for someone that wants to be in it needs to have? Uh, so like if somebody was looking to get in there, what, what's the most important thing? Um, experience, definitely. <laughs> you, you, if, if you don't possess the experience yourself, you definitely want to create a team around you that you can um, draw from um, their experience. Not only that, but you definitely need to have um, a good networking capital in today's timing um, and, and, and hard cash as well, um, because it, it's definitely important as, um, you know, some lenders are, are you know, offering lower percentage rates, but the terms and conditions may be a little bit more different than what they were uh, pre-COVID. Um, not only that, but you definitely, definitely need to have a core team that has the same vision and is willing to accept losses together as opposed to one person, you know, just taking all of the risk and, you know, uh, others being benefactors and staying on the same page is important because uh, our leadership team was definitely put to the test um, over the course of these last uh, 18, 19 months. So we definitely um, want to share, you know, what we've done to succeed with others, as well as um, help others understand that, hey, this is a great business to get into, but it is one that definitely requires a lot of work, but the rewards will definitely um, make up for the difference. Awesome. Um, so how many employees do you uh, typically have uh... And, and, and you're employed and uh, do you do you hire outside, but like subcontractors also? So um, we have a core group um, of about 10 individuals um, that, you know, handle operations for TRG. Um, however, we do outsource for um, projects for, um, you know, whatever it may be, depending on where we are, whether it be civil or residential or uh, commercial. Okay. Um, do you have any uh, current projects you can talk about uh, that you're doing uh, right now or, you know, anything like that? Yeah. So right now, as I said, we um, definitely have expanded into um, the residential um, part and uh, we have about five uh, residential projects going on right now um, to include uh, rehabs as well as new bills. Um, also, um, we are partnering um, with Manhattan Construction on uh, actually some and some of their works. Um, and then we are also looking forward to some new road construction for the Brazoria uh, community. Awesome. And uh, so you've been in this industry for quite some time. Um, is there any like uh, favorite uh, projects or favorite uh, type of uh, work that you that like this is like if you, if you get this project this is your dream project this is like my favorite thing to do on the on the site or uh, managing this project so definitely so my background is actually civil engineering 
Um, so I definitely enjoy civil projects. I mean, as a kid who, you know, who didn't like playing in the dirt every once in a while, you know, so uh, now I, I get to go on site and play with big Tonka toys from, <laughs> from time to time. Not only that, but um, one of the things that I, I find uh, rewarding about this particular industry is that whenever you're able to take the concept from paper and bring it into fruition in reality, something that you can actually touch, see, and feel. Um, and, and that's one of the things that has kept me going is that, you know, we, we all want to take it from paper and look at the end product, walk through it, see it, and you get to see the joy that it brings to, you know, our clients and end users, end users ultimately. Um, so definitely silver is my favorite part. I mean, I, I'm, I'm in it all the way from the clearing and grubbing to the underground drainage, stabilization, whatever it takes. Um, so on, we're also looking forward to uh, some of the expansion that's taking place uh, so far as the major thoroughfares and highways uh, that's going to be coming through the local Houston area. So definitely hoping to uh, try to get a piece of uh, that pie. Yeah, awesome. Um, so like I said, you've been in this industry for so long. Are there any uh, funny or horror stories that you'd like to share uh, with us? Uh, we won't use names, but just, you know, just so you know people like to hear about that kind of stuff so if you have any of, of those to share that'd be awesome i would definitely say that um if you are uh going to be on the construction site always maintain three points of contact make sure that when you park a vehicle is actually the park break is on um because i've definitely had incidents where you know fortunately um some people have had minor injuries that could have been a lot worse with runaway equipment or not only that, but uh, rings, you know, I'm, I'm very cognizant now of uh, keeping rings off my finger whenever I'm around uh, rotating equipment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, so if somebody wants to contact you about your business or or, get, or hire you or anything for a, uh, a project, how would they get in contact with you? Again, my name is Trevor Talbot. I am the Chief Operating Officer for TR Grace and Company Incorporated. You can reach me at 318-346-3850. That is my direct sale or T Talbert at trgracecompany.com. Okay. And we'll also put that down in the description for you guys if you want to get in contact with Trevor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Talbert, for uh, talking with us today. Um, I think I mean, we always appreciate it and we'll uh, hope to connect with you again soon. I definitely thank you for your time today, uh, Josh. It was my pleasure to be able to participate on this platform. Hopefully, I've said something that could be of usefulness to your subscribers um, and definitely look forward to you um, getting on the, on the silver screen one of these days, man, making, making it big. Man. So definitely uh, want to say thank you again for your time. And I look forward to uh, all the great things that come from this. Okay. Thank you very much.